our middles are definitely the backbone of the defense, and we need them to play at a high level for every other piece around them to play at a high level. Kara Lewis bleeds Maryland colors. We're both high energy people. Kara definitely brings the speed, and then I bring, you know, the high hops. Raynell Jones, another player that uh, Coach Hughes is expecting a lot from this season. Raynell's a great player. She's amazing when it comes to blocking and amazing at her offensive game, too. Raynell is someone that, you know, is physically just a huge presence for us. Kara is someone that is always bouncing around. She's always got a certain vibe about her. With their family lineage all coming through Maryland basketball, you know, it's one of the reasons why I think they wanted to make their mark here. I come down to help. Okay. I got a shooter. Okay. I got a shooter. So the, the ball, the, the, he's frozen here. Say so he got her. I got to move back out to my shooter because she can shoot the ball. My uncle played here and my father played here. Their rivalry, oh my gosh. Every single family function that we've gone to, they talk about this one game that they had. And there was this one play at the end. I don't know what game it was. If the ball is here and my man, I have, I'm on the shooter. Get Kerry, Kerry has the ball. Kerry doesn't have the ball. I'm like, I'm... <laughs> We, we're gonna argue every, every time we get together. That's been, man, that's, that's 34 years. Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it is, any gathering, we're gonna argue about it. Please, I want somebody can find the video from the LA, the 1988. 87, so you already wrong. It's the 87, 88 season. 87, 88 season. That, that's the one that never dies. We're, we're old men now just living our, living our prime, uh, living our past just through conversation. The atmosphere in Coldfield House, I, I haven't been to a place yet, even professional or collegiate, that matched that. They always talk about how hot it was and how there was no AC in the gym at all. And now that they're tearing it down, they're like, oh, my heart. But, you know, it's weird because they talk about how bad it was back then, and now they're sad to see it go. I actually have a picture of me when I was younger, of me standing in front of it back when I was, like, five years old. It was back before they changed into the football field. I've looked in there one time and I didn't like it. <laughs> I understand it because it has to progress. I came to Maryland in 84. Same year as Lynn Bias, but that was uh, an enlightenment as to how the competition was going to be here at Maryland in order to be able to get on the basketball court to play. All of our daughters are here playing volleyball. We're basketball players when we were expecting them to become basketball players. And there's Jones, she is quick to the outside. Three years ago, we were ninth in the conference in blocking. Two years ago, we were fifth. Last year, we were fortunate to, to lead the conference. The ability to block someone is to, to deny somebody a chance to succeed. And I think they both take value in that. Blocking, it's one of our specialties. So same with basketball. I feel like having the big guys as our parents and we're also, you know, the big girls on the team, it's definitely, you know, a connection that we have. I hold the career record for block shots at Merlin. Every time I see a jump in the blocks, I was like, man, that's, that's a dunk right there. She could have been dunking <laughs> the basketball. I had a 143 blocks for the single season uh, shot block record. I can tell where the ball is going to go in basketball. With volleyball, the setter can be tricky. Just being able to react to that, that pass going over to the setter is a little bit different from playing basketball. The timing of the blocks has a lot to do with, just like with basketball, they have to time when that ball is going to be hit so they can be in the right position at the right time. I was tall, I was a little lanky like my dad, so I had some of the moves that he had, but I feel like I connected more with volleyball. I feel like I found the aggression that basketball had, so I definitely connect, I guess, the swag that basketball had to volleyball and how I'm able to bring it to my own, just like the basketball players do, and how I'm able to you know, also connect with my teammates and become myself. I always used to have this dream of me like dunking a basketball on the Maryland court, but that was the only expectation. And then once I started playing volleyball, that kind of became a far distant dream. I was happy that she chose a sport that she liked. She started off playing basketball, I think she probably did that just to appease me. She ended up going into playing volleyball and just watching the excitement and her expression when she actually plays, that enjoyment was there. One of the things that our program is trying to work on is increasing our, our first touch and letting them have more opportunities to score. 
I think we're getting closer to that point, and I think you'll see both of them, you know, have more chances to be successful offensively. They love being a complete player. They push each other in practice. I kind of use this the same way as my brother. He was a top shot blocker in the country. He perfected that in practice. It definitely keeps us connected with how our, both our parents, you know, played at Maryland and also on the basketball team. And we also exchange stories on, you know, how they had their own little friendship and how we have our friendship now. Not playing basketball, I think, probably helped us because they didn't think they had to live up to that family lineage. They probably thought that they could do it in a different sport, in a different way. I'm really thankful they both chose volleyball, not basketball.